Hello, welcome to this video based upon files, uh, file access for OCR Computing A Level F452. Right, the first thing we need to look at are serial files. If we have a look here, this is an example of a serial file. Uh, in a serial file, data is stored in the order that it arrived. So if we had this as a file where we have all these different records, and we're going to put all these records very simply A, C, E, B, D into the serial file they would go in in the order that they arrive so A is first C then E then B then D any new data is added to the end of the file so say we wanted to add a new one in which might be called Z because it comes next it goes in at the end of the file okay so just simply first if we want to search a serial file we have to search from the first item so we start the first item and then we keep searching until we find the item we're looking for. So say we want to find B, we'd have to go to the first item. Is A equal to B? No. Is C equal to B? No. Is E equal to B? No. Is B equal to B? Yes. So then we find our item. If the item isn't in the file, say we were looking for a Q, we couldn't just go to the first one and say, is that a Q? And then stop there. Because we need to search through every single item or record to find if it's there. And if it isn't there, um, then we find out at the end of the file which obviously means for a search uh, that isn't existing it takes a long time to find uh, or it takes up more processing power because we have to go through every single record if we want to delete an item it will create a gap in the file say we deleted E that would create a gap in this file so to do a deletion instead of just deleting E what we do is we copy all the records in the file apart from the one that needs to be deleted into a new file. So in this case, we'd copy A and C into a new file. We'd ignore E, and then we'd copy B and D into the new file after that. Um, and then that would replace the original file. So that's an example of how serial files work. Next thing we would look at is a sequential file. This is where data is stored using a key field in logical order. Um, a key field is a uni unique identifier. Um, and it's a field that each record will use to identify the record. So for example you might have something like a student ID. Um, so the sequential file of students might be ordered by the student ID. So if we have a look here, this is an example of a sequential file. So student ID 1 is Bob and then we've got student ID 2 Tony, 6 Richard, 9 Claire. Um, so each of these is the key field and they are in order. I know they uh, are not sequential in numbers going up there may be various reasons for that but if you notice they're all in order so if we want to search for an item it's very similar to what we do for a serial file we start from the first item we search each in turn until we reach the item to be found if we reach an item that has a higher value for the key field than the search then we can stop this means unlike a serial file where we have to search all the way through the file we can actually just search until we know we've got to a point that the item that we're looking for will no longer be so if we just go back and have a look at that say we wanted to search for Richard um, and we knew Richard was six all we'd have to do is go one two six and we found it if we wanted to search for a field which would be student ID 5 we could go one two 5 isn't there, we go to 6, we know we're greater than 5 now so there's no point going on and searching and we don't have to go on to find Claire's record that obviously won't be 5. So when we're adding a new record to a sequ sequential file it is inserted within the existing records. That means we have to recreate the file again all the records up to the place of the insertion are copied to the new file the new record is placed in the correct position and the remaining records are copied into the new file the new file then replaces the old one so similar to serial but just a little bit different in the fact that if we want to insert here serial would add it to the end so it's uh, it is different actually um, it's just similar to the deletion I was, I was thinking but what we have here we want to add in Sarah what we do is we copy up until where Sarah would go, number five would go, so these first two records get copied as so. Sarah then gets added to the end of that file and then the rest of this file is appended to 
the new file and that, that new file is the one that's kept, the other one's discarded. Now if we want to delete a file, say we want to delete Richard, this is where we get to something that's very similar to the serial setup for deletion. So deleted item creates a gap in the sequence, same process as serial file. To remove the gap, um, a new file is re sorry, the file is recreated. We copy all the file's records into a new file apart from the one to be deleted. Um, this replaces the original file. So as we did before, we would copy all of these three across. We'd ignore this one, we'd copy this one across, and then this file would be deleted and we keep the new file instead. And there's the example of the new file. Right, so serial versus sequential. Uh, when would you move them? You might get asked to, uh, when would you use them? You might get asked a question based upon this. Um, sometimes you'll get asked a question just simply what's the uh, difference between serial and sequential. You might get asked a question that asks which type of file would you use in a certain situation. That's where you have to be uh, a bit cute and I'd suggest you look at the past paper questions because there are some examples for this. But firstly serial files are relatively short. Um, you, you generally use it in a, uh, a short file or a small file. Use when programs need all the data. So you you don't usually need to access individual records separately. You just need to go through all the data and all the data needs to be used by that program. Um, it's also used when there's no need to have data in a particular order because obviously they go in as they are entered. And obviously that also means that it makes it easier to program because you're just entering data as it comes in. Sequential files, however, these are records that can be searched quickly and efficiently with a simple binary search. Um, if the record isn't found, the whole file doesn't have to be searched, the s which is obviously an advantage compared to the serial file. The search can stop when ready, uh, sorry, when reading a key field that is greater than one being searched for. Um, this means it speeds up the searches, which also means it saves on processing power. It does mean, though, it's slightly more difficult to program than a serial file. So, a couple of uh, advantages and disadvantages for both there. Right, the next type we've got to look at is an index sequential file. Um, it seems complicated, but it isn't. Basically, it's a sequential file where the data is organized by a key field, but we also have an index to allow records to be found directly. Um, we use it when it is necessary to process all the data in central sequential order, but also when we need to find individual records directly. Um, for example, we could have a student file to look up individual students, then the index would be used to record um, to find a record quickly, but we might also want to display or print a register of all the students uh, so the data can then be accessed sequentially in that case. So if we have a look at this, here's an example. Um, it's a very basic example, but here's an example of what, what it might look like. We have a record number here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Every record is numbered as we go down. The surname is, in this case, the key field. Wouldn't usually be a key field, just a very basic example, as I said. Um, why it wouldn't be a key field? Because it's generally you wouldn't find a unique surname, but in this case we'll just uh, use it for this example. And we also have an index where we index against the surname and we're going to index the first letter of the surname. And that index points to where the first letter starts for each block, if you like. And that means we can quickly access using the index. So if we wanted to sequentially uh, print all this out, obviously we can just go and print and it would sequentially go through everyone in order. However, if we wanted to give direct access, say we wanted to find uh, a surname, in this example we're looking at here, we're looking for Dunwoody. We go through the index first, find that the D is in record number 6. We can jump straight to number 6 and then sequentially search from there. In this example, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of point, but imagine if you had 100,000 records before you got to D. Well, we've only had to search the index for 1, 2, 3, 4 points to find where the record starts, whereas if we had to do it in a sequential file, we'd have to go through 100,000 records first before we even got to D. So it allows us to jump to a certain block very quickly, which improves the speeds of our searches. The next file we need to look at are random files. The random file lets records um, allows you to store records anywhere 
in a dedicated section of the disk. Uh, basically, they get stored randomly. There's no specific place they get stored. Uh, a hashing algorithm is used, and that's a calculation that's performed on the field to be stored. The result of this is the record's address. So any calculations that, that's performed on a, a record or a field of a record, i.e. the key field, um, will put this into a certain location on the disk. So it means the records are randomly ordered across the disk. To find data is quick as long as you know the key field and the hash algorithm, obviously. Um, there's no need to refer to other data in the file. You only need to know the key field and the hashing algorithm to find a specific record, which means it's good for large databases where you want to look up uh, records individually and frequently. So you want to find records quickly as an individual record and you want to find them often as an individual record. So if we have a look at this just to put a bit of a diagram in it, it helps to explain it. It's not obviously a perfect diagram. But what we have here is a record with a key field 1, Jones, the algorithms performed on the key field and that would place it somewhere randomly on the disk, so we put it here. The second record, 6, Richards, again, it's not put in an order, it's put somewhere randomly on the disk. And it's a reserved section of the disk. The problem with an hashing algorithm, obviously, is sometimes you might have a collision. Uh, what that means is, is you might have a calculation performed on a key field that actually means the data goes to the same address. What you need is a good hashing algorithm that avoids these collisions. If there is a collision, then the record will have to be placed elsewhere and this will then slow down the searching of records because um, it's likely it will have to go via the first instance of the hashing algorithm and then point to another location. Um, the overall positive, obviously, is it's quicker to insert a new record. Um, in this case, is you don't have to recreate the whole file. Uh, that's why it's better than the index sequential, where you'd have to, or sequential, where you'd have to recreate the whole file if you're inserting a new record. Obviously, the negatives of this would be um, it's a lot more complicated to create a program using this sort of hashing algorithm, and you need to make sure that the hashing algorithm will have minimal, if any collisions. So they are the different ways that you need to learn for file access. Um, hope that helps. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you again soon. Bye.